all my Timmy failure people. I am starting off with chapter six today. Sorry I missed yesterday, so I'm gonna try to make up for it a little bit today. Chapter six, a pizza fork in the road. I steered the ship the entire way back to port. I tell Dorm and Dave as we disembark. Well, you steered for about a minute and then threw up on the captain. Yes, well, the pressures of running a ship are immense. I wouldn't expect a recreational fisherman to understand. I see, says Dave. Well, the important thing is that we got to spend time together. I wouldn't get used to that, Dave. No, no, because for me, it's career first. And as you saddled me with a particularly unqualified intern this week, ahead will be especially trying. Dave puts his hand on my shoulder as we begin the short walk home. Be nice to Emilio. He likes you. He's an employee, Dave, or more like a former employee. I'm thinking about firing him. Dave smiles. What you do with your detective agency is up to you, Timmy. Yes, Dave, I know that. But you have to know a couple things about Emilio. Let me guess, he irons his socks? No, answers Dave. He eats pizza with a fork, I ask. No, Timmy, listen, it's a little more serious than that. More serious than eating pizza with a fork? This I have to hear. Well, first off, says Dave, he has no siblings. No siblings? I don't have any siblings, and look at how well I turned out. Dave rubs his chin. Yes, Timmy, but there's a bit more to it than that, he says as we turn up front to the walkway of our house. Good, because so far it sounds like a charmed life. Okay, let me start over, says Dorman Dave. But there is no time for that, because Abraham Lincoln is calling. Chapter 7, The Unemancipated Proclamation. I run up to the front steps of our house and pick up the phone. Hello? Timmy, it's me, Rollo. Summer school is great. We have Mr. Jenkins, and he's teaching American history. I can't believe you're not here. We're even having a play. And guess who I get to be. How did you get this number? I asked my best friend, Rollo Tukas. You gave it to me, he says. For emergencies, I replied. Not for telling me about stupid school plays. All right, we'll just guess who I'm going to be. No. Abraham Lincoln, he shouts. I get to recite the Emancipation Proclamation. Good for you, Rollo, but I'm bored already. Bored? Theater is exciting. Maybe for you, but for me, steering a ship is exciting. Saving the lives of hundreds of people is exciting. All of which I just did. You mean like pretend? No, Rollo, for real. 30-foot waves, perilous reefs. I tell you more, but I think I have scurvy. Scurvy? That's for not getting enough vitamin C. Correct. Are there no stores where you can just like go get some orange juice? I thought Key West was a fancy vacation place. No, Rollo. Key West is the edge of a frontier. Things here are stark uncivilized, lawless. You may never see me again. So you're not going to come back to summer school when you get back? Summer school? I shout to Abraham Lincoln. Summer school is for people without lives. I am a sea captain. I save lives. Well, that's odd then. What's odd? I ask. And that's when Abraham Lincoln delivered the worst news since the Battle of the Bull Run. The teacher said your name in roll call. Chapter 8. Timmy's Death in the Afternoon You did what? I yell at my mother as I walk into the kitchen. I thought you want to go to summer school. Your friends are all there. It could be fun. I'm so upset. I am speechless. So I draw her a diagram. Oh, here we go with the Mr. Dramatic stuff again, says my mother. Mr. Dramatic, I fire back. First off, how am I even supposed to take a class? 
I'm not even there. Timmy, you're only missing a week of class, and I asked Rollo's mom to email me this week's assignments. Homework during summer vacation? You can't do this. I have an upset stomach, hypothermia, scurvy. She reaches into the refrigerator and pours me a glass of orange juice. Drink this, she says. You'll be fine. So I choose the only sensible option remaining for a child facing summer school and fake my own death. Chapter nine, Timmy and Rufus and Doris and Emilio. Look into my eyes, Doris said the man with the strong chin. I will take you places of the heart that you've never been. Oh, Rufus, she replied. Take me, I am yours. No, Doris, you take me. No, Rufus, you take me. Unable to decide who should take whom, Doris and Rufus ate a pizza. I'm lying in bed and Amelia Empanada is reading me romance novels. For in an evil counterstroke, my mother used my fake death as an excuse to stick me in a room with the sniffly Emilio Empanada, lover of romance novels. And my sarcastic mother even made a sign. Emilio stops reading and sets the book down on his lap. Isn't it beautiful, he asks the love between Doris and Rufus. It's absurd, I answered. Ruf Rufus is a bag of useless platitudes and Doris is not much better. I think you're missing the subtle undertones of this literature, says Emilio, but that's okay. I can read you Love is a Speckled Pony of Desire instead. No thanks, Emilio. That sounds even worse. I'm only lying in bed because my mother made me. What about the looming milkmaiden of love? Asks Emilio. It has a good ending. I told you, Emilio, I don't want to hear any more of your literature. How about if I just skip to the end? No, but he flips to the end anyway. And when he gets there, a piece of paper flutters to the ground. And it is not about Doris or Rufus. Chapter 10, K-Pop Fear. My life is in great danger, I shout to Emilio and Panada. We must act. So I jump out the window and slide down the balcony support. and find my intern on the front porch. And we run from palm tree to palm tree, avoiding assassins. But why would somebody threaten you? Emilio asks me as we flee. Because they know my reputation as a detective and they don't want me here. So what do we do? Survey the entire island. Find out what we're up against. he asks, panting harder with each step. We rent a seaplane. I'll fly it. You just hang on. That seems dangerous, says Emilio. For normal people, I tell him, but I'm not normal people. Emilio nods as he runs. But do you even know how to fly a seaplane, he adds, almost breathless. No, but I've kept them to ship, and they are identical tasks. We come to a bizarre native tree and hide behind its strange tall roots. We can shelter here, I announce. Give you a chance to catch your breath. You appear to be in no shape for detective work. I'm not, he says. What is this thing anyway? I ask, staring up at the unusual tree. A K-pop tree, says Emilio. How do you know that? That's a demerit. I inform Emilio. Never attempt to show up your boss. He makes an X in his notebook. Especially when you are an unpaid intern, I add. He makes two X's in his notebook. 
Speaking of working for you, Emilio says, looking up from his notebook, I think it would be bad to be a maimed on my first week. So I vote we do something other than fly. I glance at him. Not that I'm afraid, he adds. Fear is a cruel master, I inform Emilio and Panada. Best to overcome it now, while you're still an unpaid intern. I see, says Emilio. Well, maybe later. Fine, I shall be merciful and select another option, but next time we fly. And leaping up from shelter of the kaipok tree, I lead him to the most strategic spot on the island. Alright, so that's where we're going to stop for today. So we read chapters 6 through 10. And I will hit you guys with some more chapters tomorrow. I hope everyone's having a great day. And like I've said before, if you guys would like, go ahead and feel free to share this and let other classrooms use it as well. We're all doing the digital learning thing together. So any people that can benefit from it, it would be great. Bye guys. Have a great day.